Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. If you'd like to see the Simplicity faux wrap pants that I finished and the Celeste shirt with the hook and eye closure, stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Deb and this is DB Designs and Sewing Australia and welcome to Friday Sews. I'm going to show you what I made this week and this week I finished the Simplicity K9111 and I made the faux wrap pants in a beautiful tensile fabric that I got from Blackbird Fabrics a really long time ago. Now I think I received this pattern in a magazine. It's size 6 to 14, so I made the biggest size, the size 14. Here's the finished pants. I will insert photos. And you were supposed to have a, um, a little tiny belt buckle or some sort of a thing, but I didn't have one that was small enough, so I just put this little pair of scissors on it. But in fact, this wrap thing really doesn't do anything. It just hangs down the side. So quite a nice pattern, pretty easy pattern. An invisible zip in the back. So I will insert photos. A nice pattern only just fits quite firm across the tummy. I wouldn't say that I'm totally in love with the pattern. It's nice, but I wouldn't be rushing to make it again. I will wear them and I love this fabric. This tensile fabric is absolutely beautiful. Quite a nice sew, gorgeous fabric. It reminds me of the sand washed silk, which wasn't real silk, that we used in the 90s. So really nice. The drape is okay. Even though it's sand washed, well, it's tensile, but it looks like sand wash silk and it acts like sand wash silk. I wouldn't say the drape is the best that you could get. I'm wondering whether or not I should stitch those down further so it gets more of a drape further down. But they fit pretty well and they're comfortable and I really like the look of them. So won't be rushing to remake that pattern. The pattern was very easy to follow. It's a simplicity. And it says it's from somag.co.uk. So I think I received that in a magazine. So that was my first make for the week. The second thing I made was actually um, pyjama pants for my grandson Madden with his little penguin obsession. And I just had this fabric in my stash because I think I'd made sheets for the porter cot out of it. And I cannot for the life of me find any um, penguin fabric. I'd really like to make him a pair of pajamas in a jersey because that's his preferred um, that's his preferred pyjama fabric type. But I had that fabric, so I made it up for him. And I used this Peekaboo Pattern Shop pyjama party pants pattern and just put cuffing on the bottom to make it a little bit easier for him. Uh, he doesn't, he's not really into flannelette pyjamas. And I have got a white long sleeve t-shirt that I'm going to put a little penguin pocket on it for him as the top because I couldn't really find anything else and that was all the fabric that I had. I didn't really have very much of that fabric. So I made those for him. And the last thing I made was the Celeste blouse by Stylark. Now this is the Celeste blouse here and you can see it's got all of those beautiful seams that will make shaping really, really easy. And I cut out the size 12 
and it fitted perfectly. I did not need to make any alterations and I didn't even need to take it in up the top part like I thought I would. So really, really happy with that. And I managed to get the hook and eye closure that I wanted to do. I did break four needles while I was sewing this. Sewing in this hook and eye. So that's the inside of it. And that's the outside. I will insert photos so you can see how it looks, but it's a lovely pattern. It's a much longer shirt than I thought it was going to be. But then if I looked properly at the images, we can see that the shirt is actually quite a long shirt. So not something that you would wear tucked in. It's probably designed to wear out. Uh, of course, with the hook and eye closure, you do get the bottom part opens like that which is fine because it's down quite low by the time it opens up now i made this in a white cotton sateen that i got from spotlight and it's actually a really nice fabric it's very it's quite a thick fabric so it will be quite a warm shirt really happy with it and i think it's a really really nice shirt but i don't think i'd go for the hook and eye closure again. I really like the way it looks and I'd had, in the 90s, I'd had a black shirt and a white shirt that had that same sort of closure and that's why I wanted to do it in it. But it was a lot of fiddling around, a lot of fiddling around. So the shirt's actually really quick to make and it has your very nice inverted parts here. So it's got them in a few different spots and you can see if you follow the instructions properly and sew them from the top to the bottom, you actually get a really good, really good finish on it. So, oops. There they are on the outside. So you get a really good finish if you follow the instructions properly. Now, it is one of the style arc patterns that has more instructions than you'd think. So you get your front page with your images on it. I think it tells you the sizes and how much fabric you need. Then you get your cutting out instructions, I guess you'd call them. And this used to be all you would get this tells you the construction of it, which isn't all that helpful um, on a shirt with so many pieces in it. But now you'll also get these other instructions showing you how to make it and a lot more words in it. You know, this has now got 25 steps in it, which is quite a lot for a style arc. And this is the final one. I didn't necessarily make it up in the order they said because I wanted to do the collar before I did the facing so that I could insert the hook and eye. The hook and eye is on a tape. So I'll show you the tape. This is the hook and eye tape. So you get those two parts to it. I have overlocked the edges of it because I washed this just like you wash your fabric thinking you know what if I don't wash the tape and it's 100% cotton it's likely to shrink so I washed the tape as well as the fabric just to ensure that um, one part wouldn't shrink and the other wouldn't so really really happy with it the only thing I can say is that the, the cuffs are just an added on cuff. There is no button, there isn't anything. And it's just a bit nothing, if you know what I mean. I mean, it's like it is on the girls in the photo. You wouldn't know that it doesn't have a button on it. And it's a two piece sleeve. So even the sleeve has got a lot of shaping in it. Sleeves went in very, very easily. They're not put in on the flat, they're put in on the round. Um, and so, 
as you can see, a nice two-piece sleeve. I do like a two-piece sleeve. It makes, um, it elevates things. That's why I thought the cuff was a bit strange, just to be just a cuff. I know, and personally, I wouldn't have wanted to put a button on it because I wasn't putting buttons on it. I was putting, I was always going to do the hook and eye closure on it. I think I will make this shirt again, but I will um, put a button closure on it. I can, in fact, get it over my head without undoing it. So really, really happy with it. Really happy with how it looks. And yeah, very nice pattern. And for once, good instructions from Style Arcs. They are lifting their game and improving their instructions all of the time. So that is great style arc. I've also got some fabric I purchased. Now Drapers in New Zealand had a really big sale going on. And as I'm in Australia, it doesn't really cost very much for freight and depending how much you spend, you can get it for free. So the first thing I bought was a viscose niche which is 95% viscose and 5% lycra. Now, this is quite thin, but I wanted to make some spencers with it for winter. So I think I only bought one meter, but I'll probably get two spencers out of that. So I wanted to make spencers that probably came out to there, came down to here and just had a turned over or probably cover stitched um, neckline and sleeves that probably go to just where this t-shirt goes to. In fact, does anybody know what this t-shirt pattern is? I've looked through, I found this in my wardrobe this morning. I have no idea when I made it. I know I made it. I can tell I cover stitched it. So it was when I had a cover stitch machine. So it can only be a couple of years old. And it's got one of my labels in the back of it, so I must have made it. Now that's like a little facing, that's a sewn on facing, not a turned over edge. And three quarter sleeve, at first I thought it was, um, is it called the Mandy Boat Neck? But then I realized that that had a drop sleeve and this doesn't have a drop sleeve. So I'm not sure what pattern it is and I can't find it. Um, I'm wearing it today with my Lander pants, which are ooh, way too big for me, but I really like them. So um, I just pull them down to my hips so that that's as far as they can fall. Now, the other fabric I bought was... 100% merino wool in a charcoal colour, but I'm also, surprisingly, I'm not making a Trudy turtleneck um, to go with all my other ones. I'm going to make a Spencer again for winter. When I see how much the electricity and the gas bills are, I just think because I will be home a lot more this year, I think I just need to wear warmer clothes or wear some layers so I bought that, see that? I'll show it to you single layer because it's not, it's not as heavy as my other merino wools that I have made my Trudy turtlenecks out of. Yeah, so they were nice and on really big sale. Now the other thing I bought was some houndstooth wool coating. Now this is 100% wool, dry clean only. So I won't be washing that before I, I make up my coat. I'm not sure which coat I'm going to make in this. Probably something that's a shorter type of coat, not a long coat. So something you can just throw on to go down the shops. So that's in a red and grey houndstooth. I just thought that was something different than I usually have. So that's why I purchased that. The next thing I purchased was some satin. 
and the colour's called Smoked Lilac. Now that's the right side, that's the wrong side. So you see it's got that pinky lilac look to it. It's a really beautiful fabric. And I'm not sure if I'm going to make a nice winter shirt or even a jackety type of shirt out of that. But it was on sale and I loved the colour. So I purchased that. And the last thing I've got is some bonded satin. So this is a very heavy satin. And you can see how stiff it is. And that's in a, I think it's called, is it called Midnight? I haven't written down what it's called. But it's in a dark navy blue. It's actually sunny here today and I've got the curtains open for once. I don't open them that often. I don't want my fabrics and threads to fade, but I've got them open today. So it's got a really nice sheen to it. You can see the sheen to that. And I was going to make a skirt in that. And if you've seen any of the skirts around and they come up on um, Instagram all the time and they're quite a pleated skirt and because the fabric's heavy, it's going to stick out. So it's very similar to the Steena skirt. Not sure if theirs have got pockets in it or not, but that was what I was going to make with that fabric. So that's what I've been doing this week. Thank you everyone for all your well wishes for my recovery from shingles. I am on the mend. I can actually wear a real bra now, not just a soft bed bra, as we call it. But still there's a lot of pain, like somebody's stabbing you in the back and actually in the front as well but my whole armpit and underarm is numb so I wouldn't know if that's going to end up hurting or not and I do believe that they can last up to three months the numbness but the numbness doesn't worry me because that doesn't hurt so it's mainly when you have a shower and like you use a face washer that you feel that you have no feeling there and that goes all the way from under my arm here all the way down my side so at least it's not hurting there now so if anybody knows what t-shirt pattern this is it's got to be I want to say at least two years old okay I just looked up when I bought my cover stitch machine and it's five years ago so this t-shirt could possibly be five years old how time flies 2018 I bought that so it's in fact five and a half years since I bought the cover stitch machine so if you know what t-shirt it is I really like it it fits really well I was just looking through the wardrobe trying to find something to wear with these pants that I could sort of tuck in because the pants fall down um, and I came across this and I thought oh what's that and then I thought oh I made it I do not have very many things in my wardrobe that I did not make. And what I should do is I should do a, a video showing all my bottoms. Well, not my bottoms, but all skirts, pants, shorts, and then one with all my tops. I've got quite a lot of tops. Um, the majority of them I made, so... But I've had some of them for a fair few years and I do wear them. So, gosh, that sun. Nope, still just as bad. Um, so that's all I have for you today. I am also going to do a video on the progress I'm having with my baby lock overlocker. Um, Diana, who is Stacey J from Stacey J Studios, mum, said that Deborah hasn't said um, how she's going with her baby lock overlocker. And I have sewn so many things on it. It's absolutely fabulous. And so I was going to give a little demo on sewing from one type of fabric to the next. And I've never had an issue with it. So 
it's been really, really good and it threads so easily. Like the genome that I had before that I broke, it didn't break itself and it was only four months old when I did that to it. It's never been the same since. It's an air threader as well, but not an air threader like this is. This air threader is just fabulous. I will show you that in a video coming up. Everybody have a wonderful week. Thank you for all your well wishes. Thank you to the people who bought me a coffee on my Kofi account. Very much appreciated. And I will talk to you all soon. Please like and subscribe. Bye.